Welcome to West Coast Wednesday here on Prospectors Radio with Kathleen Biffle, Rich Cooley, Scott Swiftwater Tony, Indiana Gold Hunter, Dennis Dayton, and your host, Tim Grimes. We hope you enjoy the show and thanks again for listening. All right, everybody, welcome back to another West Coast Wednesday here on Prospector Radio. I'm your host, Tim Grimes. Joining me tonight, I got the crew here. First off, we're going to start with Mr. Rich Cooley. What's happening, Rich? Oh, not much. How's everyone tonight? Doing good. Feeling better. Warmed up a spinch today, so that's yeah. a little ray of sunshine. I had a little thing this morning. Somebody broke into my truck. Well, what? they didn't get in my truck because it was locked, thank God. Mm-hmm. But uh, I got a phone call or text this morning from the neighbor and says, Hey, check your truck. My car got broken into last night and change got taken out of it. So I looked out the window and him, my back cap is up and my tailgate's down. Really? I walked I walked out and there wasn't nothing nothing in there anyway except for a couple of pieces of wood. Mm-hmm. But I had my other little GMC truck sitting in front of it that had a bunch of junk in the back and they didn't steal that. I don't know why. I wish they would have. <laughs> no, they went for what was easy probably on the on the end. Yeah, right. all the stuff by the road. Sure. Wow. They broke broke some windows down the road and some other places in some other vehicles, I think, and then they stole some wallets and some other stuff out of credit cards and and then the cops come by and took my name down and everything, talked to me and So yeah, that was the thing this morning. Wow. All right, next question. Why do people leave their wallets in their car and their credit cards? I don't I don't know. <laughs> you know. It's like no. It's in my pocket, and then it comes in the I house. I do that. You know? What? I do that. You do she the... leaves the keys in the car oh. at the overnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then gets mad in the morning because she can't find can't her keys. Can't find them. <laughs> Where's my keys? <laughs> They're in the car where you left them. Well, yeah, I, but I, when I lived in Pennsylvania, out in the country, I used to leave my keys in the car because I lived in nowhere, yeah. no man's land, and... I didn't have to worry, but in the city here, no, no, no. That's I don't leave nothing in the car. You know, that's crazy. Yeah, you got to be careful nowadays, you, you know. Do. I've checked everything to make sure. I still got to check one little trailer. I didn't even check on that. I just noticed today, I figured, well, when I get home, I better check to see if that thing's still there. Yeah. I don't even notice. It wouldn't hurt so. just to check and make sure everything's okay. But yeah, that was my exciting day. Exciting day for you, Rich. So, yeah. Uh, so, what did the weather turn to out there today in Pennsylvania land? Did it get nice for you too? Uh, it's half decent, fifties. Then we'll take that. It's supposed to be good on Thursday and Friday, I think. Mm-hmm. But right. it's calling for rain Saturday and Sunday. Yep. So. Same for here. Same exact forecast. Yeah. Me and you's getting. But hey, I guess we'll take it. At least it's warmer. That's all I care about. That's a sign of spring ish. -ish. But mm -hmm. let's not hold our breath, because like Dennis said, it'll probably snow Monday. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Never know. <laughs> Never know. Well, I'm glad you made it tonight, buddy. Oh, thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. All right. Also joining us tonight, all the way from Arizona, our very own Miss Kathleen Biffle. <laughs> How are you, Kathleen? Hey. Are you li living the dream? <laughs> I am, and I don't want to go back. <laughs> I really don't. I don't <laughs> it's hot, you. but I like it. Yeah, of course. How can you not, right? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm busy, but, you know, people go into work very, very early, like 6, 6.30 a.m., and they leave at 3, which I definitely could get used to this. Oh, heck yeah. Good <laughs> yeah, that that's just nice. You're able to see palm trees. You're oh my warm. gosh! The view. Oh, it's. I don't know if, it, if if some of the listeners seen your Facebook Live video you did, but <laughs> it's like, man, look at them! Look at look at Shad and Kathleen. They're just bright and smiley and happy. They're they're wearing summer clothes. <laughs> oh my gosh! I mean, when we left on Monday. It was snowing. Yeah, they had to delay our flight to de-ice the plane, and the whole time I'm just sitting there, just looking at the grayness. Yeah, that is Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking, I just want to get there <laughs> and get out of here. 
and it, you know, it's been great. So, um, unfortunately, I got to go back uh, tomorrow night uh, after work. After work. Well, it's like a late flight, so I don't get into Ohio until early Friday, and I'm just taking Friday off. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. So you'll you'll take off Friday, and it's supposed to be a really nice day Friday. That's what I hear. So. So who knows what will happen? Right. So this might work out perfect for you. You know, you're not, yeah. not coming back to grayness and <laughs> poopiness. Ohio is gray. <laughs> yeah, it's should, just gray. It's just call it, I don't know, oh, gray Ohio or gray Ohio or something. Because <laughs> it's always gray. <laughs> gray and colorless. It's just like blah. It's horrible well, looking. You know, we went to the barbecue place mm -hmm. and... Uh, Swiftwater, I think he'll join us later. He closes at 6. Okay. So that is a lot of the reason why he has been MIA. Sure. <laughs> right, of course. Because that time... You know, he's got to drive home and stuff, and that's like in the thick of rush hour mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So, um, you know, it was good to see him. He shaved the beard, as some of you, if you've been on Facebook, have seen the posts. Mm -hmm. But I ordered the carnitas. <laughs> and it was so good. I really liked it. I mean, it was tender. It was seasoned great. Um, not bad value at all. Really? Yeah. yeah. And, and he was busy. He had a steady stream of customers. And Scott got the weight on you, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Better yet. Yeah. We walked in there. He didn't recognize us at first. He was like, oh, that looks like uh, Shad. And then <laughs> wow. So clearly he doesn't listen to the show when he's not no. on. He would have known we were there. Right. He, he would knew you too. guys were coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm hmm. And he obviously is not a very observant person because he. <laughs> no, and that was evident in how I asked for coleslaw and got mac macaroni salad instead. <laughs> 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 I didn't say anything, though, but I'll say it here tonight. It must be Arizona coleslaw, huh? <laughs> Maybe that's what they call it macaroni salad. Hmm, yeah, he's your friend on Facebook. He's, he watches your Facebook lives. You've met mm -hmm. him, but he still don't recognize you. But you no. can recognize him in a crowd of 100 people. <laughs> hmm. Well, if I could see him, he's yeah, so right. if you could short, see him. you know. <laughs> I mean, he's shorter than Dennis. Come on. Mm -hmm. This is true. So. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's well, why. We had a great time, and I, we really wanted to go out there and do the show with him, but mm -hmm. it just... I, you know, we don't have his phone number. Oh, <laughs> you don't nope. have his phone number? No. Oh, wow. You should have texted so, me. I just sent it to you. Yeah, well, we didn't work it out. Plus, it was, you know, I, I was still leaving work. and Right. By the time we would have driven out there, we would have been rushed. And I had I had to finish my fun facts. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, be, being on here at 6 p.m. as opposed to 9. Oh, yeah. I have less time to do some last-minute cramming. <laughs> yeah, right, definitely. You're three hours behind us right now. So Yeah, uh, and the sleeping patterns, let me tell you, is crazy. <laughs> are you sleeping better or are you all The first night up? I slept like a rock, but last night I could not fall asleep. But when I finally did, I slept pretty hard. So I, I'm going on through like three hours of sleep. Okay. So it's uh, we haven't even had dinner yet. So really? I imagine after dinner I'm crashing. <laughs> well, that's good. That means there's no ghosts there in, in in Arizona. That means you need to get the heck out of Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's an yep. obvious. Yeah. I I just I just know that I was meant to be here. And that house, that house you guys looked at, that was really cool. I like that. Oh my gosh, it was amazing. And it and and where it's you know it's going to be a drive for me to get to downtown Tempe. But I, you know what, I just don't care <laughs> because that if I get to come home with a mountain in my backyard, oh, right? And I know in the wash, you said the wash comes right off that mountain. Yeah, and, you, and it, weren't you saying there's like a some kind of a goat camp just a quarter mile away? Oh yeah, it's a uh, park or something. Prospectors Park, yeah, so there is a lot of mining yep. in that area. And, and you know it comes down that wash when it rains, so. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> and the property had two of them, not just one, but two. Oh, wow. On a private road, well, it's not, it's a dirt road, mm -hmm. 
but it, it's it's worth it. I don't care. It, <laughs> it, there's just so much. The house is kind of like a needs a lot it's of a work. Fixer, it's a fixer, <laughs> but I don't upper. care. All right. What do they always say? The the worst house in the best neighborhood. You yeah, know, exactly that's right. The way to do it, but yeah. you know. Um, looking into it, they've got ten offers on it. So you know, if it happens, then it was meant to be. All if right. it doesn't happen, then we just keep looking. So I think Donald Knox said that's a superstition mountain back there. Yep, exactly. Well, it's that's on the other side of it. This mm-hmm. one's like I think like the Tonto Mountains or something. Okay. Tonto Mountains. Yeah. The Tonto National Forest. Yeah. Or forest. And mountains. <laughs> mountains. But it's mostly important regardless. We wanted to figure out what area and to see the area mm-hmm. and really like that area. So, Because mm-hmm. you just don't know until you go visit. Right. And I drive. guess we have also have to look into the laws in Arizona, right? So apparently if you, if you even if you own the property, you have to own the mineral rights. So, you know, you could be sitting on gold. Oh. <laughs> I can't do anything about well, it. Well, if somebody else has an actual claim that they they can come they, dig on your yeah. lot. Yeah. Not or, that or that would be. Yeah, fun. if they own the mineral rights and you own the property, right. they can come in and dig on it. Wow. Right. Yep. Wow, that's kind of crazy. yeah. So it, it's it's a diamond in the rough. Mm-hmm. But that's cool. Yeah. And, but you know, well, like I said, if it works out, it, it works right. out. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't. Right. You know, no biggie. At least you've seen kind of the area you want to go to and move to. And you've walked around, we, you you've know, seen it now. Look. Right. <laughs> so that's going to help you a lot. Yeah. Even yeah. The and then getting, you know, getting connections with people here mm-hmm. who will be, will help you look and, sure. you know, make it work. Right. And then even if you're at home looking online at places in Arizona, you'll know the areas now. It's going to be like, oh, that's kind of where we look for that other place. We can, that's good. Yeah. So it'll work out nice for you guys. Yeah. So there's a lot of things we have to research and and do, but I'm telling you. (laughs) That's cool. I'm happy for you guys. Maybe that's why I didn't get any sleep last night. Could be. (laughs) Because you were too busy thinking about that. Yeah. I was busy brainstorming on ways to make this happen. Mm-hmm. That is cool, though. But like I said, you guys just look happy. And I, I, I'm i sure it's got to be because you're down there. Yeah, The sunshine does wonders. It does. It really does. It really does. Mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer in that. I think you live longer and everything. Yeah. Oh, gosh. The people are just happier. They are all mm-hmm. smiley. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're warm. <laughs> and it's sunny. And it's green and it's just nice it's not this this is depressing but you know work's been keeping me busy Mm -hmm. and i i actually am here to work so yeah we know so you didn't get to do no prospecting but but that's okay because i just wanted to be warm right so (laughs) hey take one give one that's all right you know you got plenty of prospecting ahead of you so it'll be fine at least you got to go Oh, darn, we have to make more trips to Arizona. Yeah, Whatever right. will we do? Yeah, right. That's going to break your heart, right? <laughs> darn. Man, well, I'm glad you made it. And and we look forward to hearing the news live from Kathleen in Arizona tonight. Yes. I, I have a fun fact even that has to do with out here. See, so. Kathleen's our West Coast connection tonight. Not oh, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, where are you, Tony? Scott. <laughs> I'm working M-I-A. on I'm working on downloading that, Kathleen. Okay. Yep. Oh yeah. Oh wait, did he just join us? Is he? I think he's trying to pop in there. I got it. I think he is in there. Oh. <laughs> can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, we we hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right, I'm still introducing the crew, so hang on, glad you made okay. it. Man. Oh my goodness. Stranger in the house. Well, Kathleen, I'm glad you made it tonight. Yeah. Looking forward to the news. Also joining us, the other half of the Biffles, Mr. Shad Biffles here. How are you, Shad? Pretty good. And don't worry, Scott, we weren't talking about you or anything. (laughs) (laughs) Not at all. Oh, no. We would never do that. You know, I didn't want to let everybody know I really did see you out on the corner flipping a sign for the barbecue place. But, you know. 
Sign spinner. <laughs> <laughs> He's got mad skills. Does he? <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening, Shad? You enjoying yourself? I'm sure you are. Yeah, I mean, you know, because I, I still have, have to work, so I'm stuck to East Coast time while I've been working. So I had to wake up and be on a, in a meeting at 4 in the morning here. Mm-hmm. So it's that's been a little rough. So I decided <laughs> just to take tomorrow off and Friday because I just didn't want to deal with it again for another day. No, oh, well, that's it was, cool. It was just messing me up. <laughs> yeah, throwing <laughs> off your to keep up. sleep schedule. But it's like it was weird. Like I look at the the clock on my work computer that I remote into, mm-hmm. and it has East Coast time, and I'm like, wow, it's already one o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm like, it's nine o'clock or eight o'clock here, or nine o'clock, nine, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, ten, nine, ten. whatever. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> it was hard to keep track though, and I stuff. Am, I, I feel like I'm in a time warp. I don't know. You guys are. On. We're in the future. See? Yeah. <laughs> you, We're in the past. You guys are in the past. You I can live there. Just <laughs> remember that. I'm glad you're having a good time, though, Shad. You know, enjoying the the sun and the Arizona people, and just you're there. And that's good, yep. you know. Are, are you no, going to be able to do precious metal prices tonight? Oh, uh, I guess I'll figure that one out. What about even birthdays? though somebody already gave away a little bit? However, gold is up twelve dollars <laughs> to really? one thousand three hundred and fifty-three dollars. Um, silver has climbed up seven cents to sixteen dollars and sixty-three cents. Wow. Platinum's even up two dollars to nine hundred and thirty-two. And palladium with the comeback is up ten dollars to nine hundred and fifty-eight. Man, oh, gold made a nice jump. Silver's little yep. jumps as always, but uh, palladium, okay, it's good. It's all good, right? Yeah, it's good. It's good. We'll take it, especially seeing gold climb. It's always our favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't no doubt. And she had what else do you have? Do you have birthdays? Oh, I got some birthdays. I see here. Oh well, let's hear it for the birthdays. Happy oh, oh, right. birthday to <laughs> you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. And there's your sexy birthday song, everybody. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, today's birthday is on April 11th. We have Backwoods Bourbon. All right. We have Bruce Olson, Daniel E. Welch, Dave Lineninger, Lin- H. Charles Beale, J. Dyke, Left Coast 91, <laughs> Martin Ruder, Matt Kosolovsky. Nathan Thomas, Richard Knox, and Rod Woods. And tomorrow, I can see that Andy, Gary Tolsty, and Gold Digger, it's their birthday tomorrow. So happy All birthday. Right. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, very cool. She had great job again, as always, buddy. <laughs> well, thank you for being here, Shad. And uh, sorry you got to come home so soon, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I feel, I feel kids for you. and mostly the dogs. The dogs need us. Yeah, oh, they our do. dogs are going crazy. They're just like laying outside of our bedroom door. Oh, sure, they miss, they miss oh, you. My, more. One, one dog, Misha, went to the office door and was looking and just started howling because I wasn't there. The kid said, and yeah. they would walk back to the bedroom door, then walk back. <laughs> They miss the you more than the kids do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know, exactly. And that, that's weird, ain't it? Your, your pets miss you more. It's like, wow. Yep. Pets really love us. <laughs> that's why I love dogs. Yep. They love you unconditionally, that's and they don't want money. That's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they just want you guys. That's all. That's what's cool. Well, awesome, Shad. Thank you for being here, brother. Thank you. All right. Also joining us. Somebody hasn't been here in a few weeks. We don't know where he's been. We'd never hear from the guy. Supposedly our West Coast connection. I can't recall his name. Uh, what's his name, Dennis? <laughs> Swiftwater um, Swift, Well, you know what? <laughs> I thought. Now, now he, before, he, before he, he gets on here mm-hmm. and doesn't stop, 
Mm-hmm. I thought they were, <laughs> there was reports of Bigfoot in Arizona. Mm-hmm. Not now. They caught him. It's not a Bigfoot. He shaved. He shaved. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Scott Swiftwater Tony. What's happening, Scott? Oh, man. Just getting done with the evening. Uh, had to shoo some people out of here. They didn't quite catch that 6 o'clock was closing. <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to sit down. I was like, you can't sit down tonight. I'm like, she goes, why? I said, well, you're five minutes behind. Uh, closing, and I got a radio shade to do, so you gotta go. You gotta go. See You're you gonna get a negative Yelp <laughs> review now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shoot us out of here after we bought the food. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But most of, the, most of the people that come in here that know that I do a, a radio show on Wednesday night, most of the usuals, and the, these were some usuals, and they're like, oh, I forgot it is Wednesday. I'm like, yeah, so I, I'm actually sitting inside the shop, and the lights all turned out, and a sold out sign on the door. So oh, well, there you <laughs> that go. way nobody comes up rattling the door. <laughs> right. There you go. Well, that works. It's easier than hey, you Scott, trying to. There's a lot of uh, people coming up with new nicknames for you. Oh, really? <laughs> Instead of Swift Water, yeah, there's No Show Toady. I like that one. Uh, no Water. <laughs> no Water. <laughs> and I'm sure more will chime in now. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the GPS police had to show up. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, that was that, that was pretty good. I looked, like I said, there was a lady standing there and I was helping. And I looked over, and I said, that guy looks like Shad. So I started talking to her again. I looked back, and he's got that cheese-eating grin on his face. I said, oh, that is Shad. <laughs> and then you I didn't recognize even, me? I didn't even know you were filming. You too short. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Shad, look, I'm going to ask you something. When he was behind the counter, was he... Was he standing on a step stool? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there actually was. <laughs> my, my counter's low, so I'm good. My counter's real low, so it makes him look tall. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's say we had to send Kathleen and she had to find you. It was like, find Swiftwater. See where he's been hiding. So they come a-looking for you. And we they, were looking yeah. for the beard net, though. Yeah, well, that's what uh, we really yeah, wanted yeah, to see. Right. Beard net. No hat. No mm-hmm. beard net. Man. No, nothing. So disappointed. Well, it was. The last two weeks has been kind of hectic because, like I said, you guys bounced up an hour, which put me behind an hour. And we had, you know, we had it all figured out wrong. I thought it was going to be later, and we thought it was, <laughs> but it ain't. And then last weekend, I couldn't get out of here until, like, almost 40 minutes after the show was on. And that's why I, I, could, I was telling you I couldn't even get, I couldn't get out of here and, and get back to the house in time to get on the computer. But, you know, like today, I just said to heck with it. I brought the computer up here, and I'm, uh, like I said, closed down the store and everything. I figured I'd just do the the little uh, the little sh- uh, the show tonight, set here, and see how it works. And I hope the internet stays up and good. It seems so to far, be pretty got, good. Yeah, so so far, I got the whole bar, so I'm it's looking pretty good. Yeah, it's sounding good. Almost maybe better than usual. Yeah, you know, that's all right. Like I said, I'm setting in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and then I had, and believe it or not, I had a, something I was going to talk about tonight that I kind of written out, and I had some other things that was, and then I forgot it at home. I'm like, really? Uh, so it never fails. But yeah, uh, I, there, there, I got a couple warnings and stuff like that for the for the people tonight. You know, that stuff's happening out here really quick mm-hmm. and really fast. Unlike you guys back there, that it just seems like it keeps dragging on. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the sun signs here and a lot of things has changed from the winter to now and like i said i just got some mornings and stuff to throw out and then uh, okay. we, we're just gonna wing it all right cool all right well we thank you for being here there scott no show Tony. <laughs> i like that name <laughs> <laughs> glad to be here <laughs> kind of like that one i want to hear more guys in the chat room put up more scott names for me to use because i like them <laughs> donald knox said tumbleweed scott tumbleweed <laughs> tumbleweed Tommy. that's a good one too that's a good one that's priceless <laughs> i like that one that'd be scott's new nickname tumbleweed <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta say it like that one restaurant commercial tumbleweed <laughs> <laughs> oh my god sauce <laughs> <is> swift sauce <laughs> See, that stuff's perfect. They, these guys come up with some good ones for us before the night's over. <laughs> oh, they can call them Scott Cornbread. <laughs> Cornbread. 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 Jalapeno Cornbread. <laughs> Jalapeno. Jalapeno. <laughs> On a stick. On a stick, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. <laughs> oh, mercy. I love it. Thank you, Scott, for being here. You, you and also, last but not least, our little buddy, 
the Indiana Gold Hunter himself, Mr. Dennis Dayton. How are you? Yay. How are you, Dennis? Hey, I'm I'm doing good. But before I before I get started, all I, all I know is since now we actually had to send Shad and Kathleen to Arizona to find to make sure Swiftwater was still okay. Mm-hmm. Good thing, Shad and Kathleen, you guys can go ahead and send Scott the airline ticket, all the bills and the stuff bills, that cost yeah. you to go there. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> the rental dummy. car and the you know the hotel stay and the. That way, uh, you get reimbursed for uh, the mm-hmm. trouble of having to find uh, Bigfoot. I mean, uh, Swiftwater. Uh, tumbleweed. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> good thing I've been working. I've been working a lot of overtime again. And uh, I remember last year, I had, uh, you know, you always have them little things. You know, it's it's nice to have vehicles that are like paid for and almost paid for. And I know last year, oh, probably about midsummer. The uh, brakes that went out of my truck, fuel pump went out of the wife's truck. Well, just this last week, it was just the opposite. Fuel pump went out of my truck, and the the all the front brakes actually had to replace the wheel hub assembly and everything went out of her truck. So, <laughs> thank goodness for my buddy Paul letting me use his truck. Oh, Man, that's bad it's luck. It's been one heck of a week. That sounds like it. That is bad yeah, luck. Yeah, it's uh. When it rains, it pours, right? Right, right. That's it. So you, you've had the starter go in two different weeks, go out of two different vehicles? Well, last year, yeah, last year it was the brakes on my truck and the fuel pump on the wife's at the same time. Now this year, it's just the opposite. Fuel oh. pump on mine, the brakes on hers. At the same time. At the same time. <laughs> yep, that's just bad, poor, bad luck. Yeah, I think, that's, oh. I think his cars are collaborating with each other. They are. <laughs> So, lo and behold, you know, the first nice weekend, it's supposed to get a little bit of rain, which that, you know, I don't care to get wet, but, you know, the first actually nice warm weather weekend is, guess what? Dennis isn't going to be in the creek prospecting. He's going to be working on trucks. Oh, don't you love it? Mm. Uh, well, I, I'm at least going to get one of them going. The <laughs> easiest and cheapest one's oh, going to be yeah. the brakes yeah. on the wife truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when it rains, it, it pours, doesn't it? Yes. yes. It does. <laughs> if I get that knocked out Saturday, I'm going to be in the creek on Sunday. And I'll get my truck. I'll worry about that next weekend. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Or during the week if you got some time or something. Just yeah. Yeah. Because I got to take the bed off the truck. And... Oh, that's a pain in the neck. Yeah. Now, your, your water temperature is still pretty cool there, though, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's got it snowed here this morning. Still, it's been oh, it's been stupid. Yeah, they got snow in the forecast for Monday. I was gonna say, I thought you guys just had some and it went away. We did. We have some every yep. week anymore. It's, yep. <laughs> it's like daily. And then it warms up. And then it gets cold again. And it's been stupid spring. It's it'll it'll spring. go from straight cold to hot. <laughs> so I don't think there's gonna be any. I don't think spring. we're gonna have spring. I think, we're skipping spring I this think year. So, it's what yep. it seems like. We're going from winter to summer. We're done. You know, but is winter going to last till summer <laughs> before it comes? It's sprinter, okay? <laughs> it's sprinter. sprinter. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah, you're right. Sprinter. That's a good name sprinter. for it. Man, but tomorrow's supposed to be nice, so. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see, Dennis, right? Now, how you doing? Oh, oh I'm, I'm like you, just busy, busy. Wife's got my weekend all planned. You know, oh, between yeah. painting the bathroom and crap like that, it's like, oh, really? I do that stuff all week at work. <laughs> what do I got to come home and do? <laughs> Cracking that whip on I'm you. Telling yeah, that's you. right. And honey do list. Go. Yeah, <laughs> and you can't even wash your car this week. I know, right? See, that's why I thought Did, it's supposed to the rain. One joy in your life, and you can't even. Do I know. It. I said, well, maybe I can wash it Friday after work, but then I said it's going to rain Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> so I'm like, what's the sense? It, just be out there with some suds and bucket. That's it. I yeah, I think so. Yeah. Did, did you did you guys just hear the door rattle? No. Two. I got a big sign. I'm big. I mean, it's like big as my chest hanging on the thing. It says "Sold out. Smoke more tomorrow." And they still walk up and open to try to open the door, and the lights ain't even on. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god. Did anyone else catch that as big as his chest? Yeah, that was a. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, the manly chest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll be here. Oh, now we find out you're standing on a step stool, and now you have a manly <laughs> chest. <laughs> How's that happen? I wear four inch platform. He's explained that to me. 
But he did look bigger in the video, just like always. He always the video makes Scott look like two feet bigger. <laughs> Scott, you need to wear your prospecting hat while you, you know. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. it would fit right oh, in. That would scare that scare the dickens out of most of these people. Oh no, I think they'd like it. I think most of them don't in. even know there's gold in Arizona. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's you know, crazy. That, that is true because I the people I talk to at work have no idea. Really, really. Yeah, and then they were surprised when I I told them about the show, and they're like, "I'm writing that down because that's kind of <laughs> unique." That's like strange. nobody knew about it. Huh. That's weird. Well, like look we, here. Yeah, should have took cards and passed them out. <laughs> Thank I know. It's like here, Kathleen. Everybody always says, "There's gold in Ohio." Uh, yeah, but. No, people don't know it. And people here, there are some people here that don't know. Yeah, and they got nice yeah. gold in Arizona. It's like everybody but, should know. But they're usually from somewhere else, though. Mm-hmm. Yes, True, that's yeah. exactly what I was going to say. They're yeah. transplants. They're all imports. They're all from the Midwest, Minnesota. Michigan. Cold places. <laughs> yeah, and... yeah, they're, <laughs> they're all imports. Yep. They've come there and oh, uh, Swiftwater, real quick. Chris at Cool Gold Tools wanted to know about that sign that you have <laughs> at the door. Is it really just a business card since it's the size of your chest, <laughs> <laughs> or is it a post-it note? <laughs> it's a post-it note. Yeah, it's a post-it note. Uh, no, it's like two. Well, see, I just had two people pull up and they seen it from the driveway. They just backed out and left. So I know it's you know it's probably about two and a half feet wide. <laughs> Sorry, West Coast. Uh, that's that's true. What Kathleen said, everything pretty much closes around six or seven o'clock around there. Then, uh... yeah, we were afraid we we're going to end up in another Denny's. Oh, really? <laughs> that's not good, right? When uh, we were, I think last year we went to Arizona. We came after we prospected. We came into uh, I forget what town it was. Yeah, it was um, a small town on the way to Tombstone area. Uh, no, this was like last year after the gold show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So every place was closed, so we wanted to go get something to eat. So uh, no, I was Rich, with you. Yeah, that was Rich, yeah. Shad, and I just kind of had to. We just went to Denny's, oh. and the next time mm-hmm. Shad and I came out, we were kind of in the same predicament. We're like, okay, it's dinner time. Um, eight need, o'clock at night. Yeah, yeah. eight o'clock. Yeah, uh, we need to stop somewhere, and we were in. Where were we? Benson. Know. We were in Benson, Arizona, yep. and everything was closed, and guess where we ended up, Rich? Denny's. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we oh, never man. close. That's their motto. Wow, that's weird. Why did they close everything so early? Because they can. No, just because they can? I guess that's good enough it's hot? reason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, right? It's weird. It's probably not as populated, though, around there as like it is here. In you those know? towns, guys it's rest, not. So. Yeah, I mean... But, I mean, like here, downtown Tempe... Well, it's a college town yeah, with they're, ASU, they're, so. They got stuff going until 11, so... Actually, right. a pizza joint's open until 5 a.m. Jeez. Wow. They must sell a lot of pizza. <laughs> yeah, they got. I think a couple of places do have that late night shift on it that they all come. They like the guys come in and work from twelve to five or something like that. Mm-hmm. Man, they must shoot cater to those college kids, right? <laughs> oh heck yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, okay. Donald said it. It uh, lack of sales, so that's why they closed yeah. there. Okay, that makes sense. Yep, that makes, makes sense. sense. Mm-hmm. Heck, wow, that's cool. Learning about Arizona is pretty neat. All right, well, I want to thank you all for being here. And I think we'll just move along and get going with some dredging up the news with Kathleen <laughs> Biffle. It is time for dredging up the news with Kathleen Biffle. Mining news from around the globe. Metal detecting, dredging, entertainment news, and fun facts as well. Here's Kathleen. Okay, everybody. Can I hope you can hear me well. Um, coming to you from Arizona, uh, just down the road from Scott. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do uh, something different tonight because okay. it's just I'm just going to make it all crazy. I'm going to start off with global news. All right. Oh, all right. crazy. Crazy. I, it's been crazy. And there's a reason. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, so, uh, well, this is a global story, but it does have a stateside flair to it, so this is kind of in the middle. <laughs> okay. In Cornwall, England, 
the 40th annual International Collegiate Mining Competition was hosted by the Camborne School of Mines at King Edward Mine. And the, the stateside factor comes into it be, was Montana's uh, Montana Tech's mining teams performed well at this event. And this made, like, international news. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what this is is teams compete in seven old-fashioned mining skills. And this would include panning for gold and laying railroad track, which was interesting. Yeah. So the teams were from the United States, Australia, the United Kingdom, <sighs> Germany, Netherlands, and Brazil. Mm-hmm. So the teams that... Uh, represented the states were Montana Tech University, uh, University of Nevada, Reno, Missouri Science and Technology, the University of Kentucky, University of Arizona, South Dakota School of Mines, Colorado School of Mines, and Virginia Tech. Hmm. So they re- they represented the states, and uh, but Bon Montana Tech, they sent two men's team and one co-ed team. And with this, with this, all this competition, they um, they competed in like hand steel. I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, gold panning, a uh, jack leg. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Track stand. No idea. Mucking. I think I know, but I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and a Swede saw and survey. So those what? were the competitions that these teams had to compete with. And Montana Tech's co-ed team, co-ed men and women, Mm -hmm. um, they placed third behind uh, the South Dakota School of Mines and University of Nevada, Reno. And the co-ed team took first in track stand, which I want to know what that is. So maybe later somebody (laughs) who knows can call and tell us. I want to know what they all are. Um, The Swede Saw and Jack Leg. I want to know so they placed third in mucking and hand steel and placed well in all the other events, cool. I guess. That's so I thought cool. that was kind of neat. That is and cool. there's actually a history behind this um, event, this mm-hmm. competition. I guess it began, uh, the International Collegiate Mining Games began in 1978. And they started this to honor the memory of 91 miners who died on May 2nd. 1972, Mm -hmm. when fire broke out in the Sunshine Mine near Kellogg, Idaho. And this is one of the world's uh, largest silver mines. Mm -hmm. Since then, the games have been dedicated to all miners who die on the job. And Montana has participated in all 40 annual events. So I thought that was kind of cool to report. That is cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, It was different. So it was like a global stateside thing. Mm -hmm. Good one. (laughs) All right, so other global news. In Ghana, authorities are looking into the deaths of six miners after a roof collapsed on them, injuring two others at an American-run gold mine. So operations have been suspended following the accident, which occurred at the Ahafo Mills Expansion Project. This is located near Ghana's capital city. It's owned by U.S.-based Newmont Mining. Mm-hmm. So Newmont is a major gold producer that runs two mining projects in Ghana and has other operations in Asia, in North and South America. Hmm. Africa's second largest gold producer. They're 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 struggling with safety issues, and I guess in this region, and I've reported this before that mining is um. There's a lot of accidents. Right. It's quite frequent. Mm-hmm. So the, gover- the government banned all small-scale mining operations in the country last year to try to address environmental and pollution problems posed by mining activities. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Okay, so the next story. This was kind of interesting. I mean, this is... Um, this this is a little speculation on on investments. I don't know if if any of you do that. Okay. That's... But it's about copper. Okay. And uh, what they're saying is, copper demand will surplus will surpass supply earlier than what they have expected. 
So as early as next year, experts attending the 17th World's Copper Conference, and this is held in um, Santiago, Chile, um, experts there were, you know, getting interviewed and, and quoting. But according to chief exec, a chief executive for Copper and Diamonds at Rio Tinto, um, they said, increased consumption from new technologies including all the electric vehicles, this is driving the demand for this metal mm. and all of its byproducts. So they're saying we're going to run out of copper? <clears throat> the, the demand, yes, that is correct. The demand will surpass the supply. So, so unless new investments arise, existing mine production will drop from 20 million tons to below 12 million tons by the year 2034. Hmm. And uh, oh. this is going to lead to a supply shortfall of more than 15 million tons. And that, you know, over 200 copper mines currently in operations, in operations, they're expected they will reach the end of their productive life before the year 2035. Wow. So copper prices will price skyrocket, hmm. right? Right. So, but, mm -hmm. you know, buy low, sell high, right? Mm -hmm. And well, I'm going to give this disclosure. I am in no means giving you financial <laughs> advice. <laughs> I am not licensed to give you financial you advice. There you go. <laughs> I always, I always think, like, yes, we could just give them all the pennies back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there you, you go. Know, pennies aren't really made of copper. Oh, that's right. They're not anymore, are they? Huh. No. Well, hmm. They even gypped us there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Save that copper. I think the older ones are, but I don't know what year the cutoff was when they decided not to use copper. <laughs> I don't know either, but yeah, they did stop. Wow. Interesting. So I thought that was interesting. That is. That's a good one. All right. So um, another global story. And, and you don't hear about this place very often. It's the uh, Dominican Republic, nope. which was on. <laughs> well... During a legislative forum, and this was located in the central province of Sanchez Ramirez, uh, the residents and all the community members and activist groups said that the federal government should transfer the province 5% of the royalties it receives from Barrick Gold and that, you know, the, the, the law enforcement agencies there should push for this to happen. So Barrick, and you, you've heard Barrick Gold in a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. Stories. <laughs> stories. <laughs> um, they have a 60% interest in the Pueblo Viejo Mining Complex. And it is expected to produce between 585,000 to 615,000 ounces of gold for the company in 2018. And Goldcore owns the remaining 4% of this. Okay. Well, according to local media, community leaders said that the transfer of funds is stipulated in a contract that the Dominican Republic signed with this Canadian-based um, mine mining company, Barrick. However, they're saying that they are not fulfilling its commitment to the province. Residents have asked for both government and the company to relocate them. They said that the air pollution and the area is making everybody sick and so on. But after her, after he, having heard these and other interventions, the president of the lower chamber responded by promising to create a special commission that will investigate all of these allegations. Hmm. So things are stirring up in the Dominican Republic. Sounds like it. Wow. Never thought. Mm -mm. All right. It's so, always over gold. Oh, well, yeah. Gold makes you do some crazy things. Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this article, um, I came across this, and it was written by a, a CPA named Adam Hamilton. And I think he works for zealllc.com. But it was kind of interesting. And, and we have talked about silver before, you know, and all the prices, right? Right. And I know that... Um, but this article was about the value of silver. So I thought it was really interesting. And But before I go into what I want to dis I want to <laughs> disclose that I am in no way a financial advisor, <laughs> nor am I licensed to give advice, and I am in no way giving you financial advice. Oh, mercy. <laughs> so with that being said, um, we, 
we have seen silver lately anyway as dead money. It's been over a past year or so. The article states that silver is extremely undervalued relative to gold, Mm -hmm. but speculators, um, while there's speculators' silver futures, I don't know exactly what that is, but they they are expecting this to be bearish. All this, however, has created the perfect breeding ground that will lead to a major new silver bull market. Bull is good, bear is bad okay. in the market. And they're saying that this can happen at any time. So majority of investors have who have abandoned silver to move on to other things. This has been occurring since late 2016. And so why is this um, Adam Hamilton saying this? Well, uh, one cause is that there is a major gold rally which convinces investors to make a return to silver. Silver's dominant primary driver has long been gold. I had, I didn't know this. I thought this was interesting. Evidently, when gold isn't doing anything exciting, silver silver kind of you know languishes some neglect. Mm-hmm. But once gold rallies high enough for long and long enough, that that's the the key. It convinces investors that a major upswing is coming. Oh. So thus, silver is effectively a leveraged play on gold. This amplify this makes its price increase. And um, so silver never soars unless gold is strong. Okay. And and when I say strong, I'm not just saying high, I'm just saying strong. Right. That means it stays high and, it, and it's been quite a while, right? Yeah. It We've has seen been. kind of just teetering on the edge and there's no like drastic things, but it mm-hmm. is staying high. So it, it seems to be um, stable. So silver and gold, they often move in lockstep with each other. And they're saying, like, especially when gold price action is interesting enough to catch attention, then the lower silver prices happen to be compared to prevailing gold ones. The greater the odds, a major silver rally is coming. Hmm. And today, silver is almost as low relative to gold as it's ever been Mm -hmm. in the past century. So keep that in mind. The article is actually a super long one. And when I read it, it went into discussing the history of how silver has <laughs> performed in the past. And I wasn't going to bore you guys with all those details, but I really thought it was interesting. And, you know, you should, you know, Google it if, if you really want to know. Right. But right. in the past, and this is when you're investing, you use trends, right, to mm-hmm. drive whatever – you want to do and that's what this cpi cpa did when he wrote this article he was just basically doing a study on the past right so the article actually ends saying that the history proves that once silver starts moving it's going to happen fast yep so buy it. <laughs> but i didn't tell you to buy it now no because i'm financial right. advisor exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> Interesting, though. But I thought that was silver because I know, or, or interesting because we've been talking about silver for yeah. the past few weeks when when Chad does the prices yeah. and you're like, oh my gosh, poor silver always just like neglected. <laughs> yeah, so you know the silver bar giveaways have yeah, you know, right. Oh yeah, getting, sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. hang on to them. <laughs> um, more valuable. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Well, gold was at three hundred at one time, and look, it soared almost That's to eighteen. Right. So. That's right. So yeah. You never know. But with, with, with what's happened in the last couple of years uh, with gold is, you know, it, it'll get up and it'll go down a little bit. But you never see it just never climbing again. And, and it just seems to be very, very stable right now. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Something, right. To think, something to think about. But, you know, anything can happen. <laughs> yes, it can. It's a strange world. Do the risks outweigh the reward? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So I've got some local events I'm going to report on. Okay. Uh, the first one I thought was really kind of cool. Um, so this this program is called Becoming an Outdoors Woman, and it's called BOW, B-O-W. This program <laughs> evidently <laughs> has faces still open for their annual weekend occurring April 13th through the 15th. And this is occurring at Rustic Camp, and this is near Prescott, Arizona. 
the workshops will range from canoeing to kayaking um, to bird watching, archery, uh, beginning of fishing, which is fly fishing, I guess, because it's difficult to do, mm-hmm. and even photography. <laughs> That's so, how you become an it's outdoor not woman. Bow, it's probably bow. <laughs> bow. <laughs> bow. <laughs> Whatever. I'm like bow seems tomato. like totally backwards. <laughs> 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 bow. <laughs> no, I read that as bow, not bow. <laughs> See, I guess we're in our. Uh... That's all. Awesome. <laughs> Come on, it's bow. I think it would be bow. Be all right, all right. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, I appreciate. That. <laughs> well, bow sounds <laughs> insulting. Okay. So, I didn't. I was. Bow. I'm a woman. I didn't take offense to that. You know what? Bow, like bow wow. Well, Dogs, you're strong. Wow. So that's how I took it, but that's just me. I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, oh my gosh, um, there's different events going on, uh, and I listed some of them. And they're all all these events are going are going to be coached by pros. <laughs> More than <laughs> thirty different classes for participants. They can choose from. Um, it also includes horsemanship. Mm. geocaching, wilderness medicine, birding, and hiking. And making (laughs) sandwiches. I'm kidding. (laughs) Lady, (laughs) they're listening to this. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Send that hate mail to Shad Biffle. (laughs) I will will fully support. (laughs) Oh my god! There's some things you just can't resist. <laughs> I know. You know what? They just left I that wide I would open. I totally signed up for this because you know what? They also teach desert survival class. Oh, that'd, that'd, be, be, cool. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd, yeah, learn, I think so. Learn to drink your own pee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't know about that, but <laughs> desert survival. You won't survive. <laughs> Whatever. You can you can like get the stuff out of cactus, right? It, cactus holds water. No. It's not as easy as you think. No. Oh, really? Well, then the books, they make it sound like well, it's yeah. easy. Bear Grylls makes it look easy. Well, maybe that's what you learn in this desert survival class. So mm-hmm, Maybe. I told, if, if, if I lived out here and I was looking for something to do, I totally would sign up for this. Oh, yeah. Just so- Here's another tip. Don't ever dig a hole in the ground during the day and crawl in there. You'll bake alive. <laughs> yep. like, like a little <coughs> oven. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> there's there's tip number two for the day. Tip number okay. two from Shad Biff. <laughs> don't refer to making sandwiches on a woman's event. That's mm-hmm. tip three. Yep. Don't forget. Yeah, that, that deserves a, a punch in the face. All so hate, anyway, I'll hate mail. Shad Biffle at Prospect oh, Radio. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, if you, if you sign up for this, the class materials. Um, it's like a two hundred and fifty dollar registration fee, but it includes all the class materials that you need, mm-hmm. food, lodging, oh. <laughs> and includes two nights of lodging and all your meals, all the instruction, all the program materials, and the use of all their equipment. Mm. And what you're saying, and what you're saying is not tents, okay? They're rustic cabins. Ooh, they're showers, bathrooms, all that good stuff, you know. So I don't know how much of the wilderness you're going to learn there. Right, but... yes. Yeah. Hygiene. They're rough and it you know what? Probably. I am perfectly I, – I keep up on my hygiene even though I'm in you know in the middle of nowhere. There's no bathroom. So you know what? It can be done, oh, yeah. ladies. That's it why they make wet wipes. <laughs> yes, I'm the wet wipe queen. <laughs> I got a wipe for everything. Thank God for wet wipes, right? <laughs> Well, yeah, and, and they're fairly cheap. You buy them at Target. You know, you you can you know after your dry washing in the desert, just wipe yourself off and look at that. They fit in your bag, and you're good to go. Right, I hear you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sad, do I not? She does religiously yes. right before she goes to bed. Yes. I mean, if after dry washing it, if you wiped a wet wipe across my face, it looked like mud after you was done. Oh yeah, it looks like mud. Don't get me wrong. But at least, you know, it just you feels feel, like you tried. Yeah, you feel a little bit fresh. <laughs> it's a psychological factor of yeah, staying yeah. clean for her. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, 
I'm very hygienic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So to finish up that event, um, the, if you decide to participate in ladies, I, I, if I lived here, I totally would. Um, you would just, um, uh, all you need to do is pack your personal stuff and a good attitude. There you go. And a willingness to learn. That's right. <laughs> but I wonder if it's just like females. What if there are guys who want to learn this these skills? Well, because it says outdoor women, woman, <laughs> at B-O-W. But what, so, <laughs> I, what if you're challenged? Or what if you, I, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, go on. What's next? All right. <laughs> Things that make you go, hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so another local event, and this one's kind of neat. I, I never knew this, and I learned something new when I read about it. April 12th, and this is tomorrow. Tomorrow, right? Yeah, it mm-hmm. is. Open to the public. And this is if you live in the St. Joseph, Missouri area. Um, the event's called St. Joseph during the Gold Rush Years, and it's held at 7 p.m., at the St. Joseph Public Library. And this is at the East Hills Branch. Um, what this is, is members of the Gateway Chapter of the Oregon, Oregon California Trails Association. They're going to present this free program to educate people on the history that St. Joseph played during the gold rush. Um, it is a nonprofit profit that specializes in preserving history um, especially history in the Oregon, California trails and, and what that led to the expansion of the American West. And I'm going to give you a little background on that because when I, honestly, when I read that, I was like, Missouri, what? I don't understand. So when I did a little research, um, evidently during the gold California gold rush and all that discovery of gold, um, at Sutter Mill. And uh, well, well, news spread, of course, like wildfire. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> competition was really intense between cities trying to get all of the, the business that the pioneers were going to bring. You know, they, hey, we got your supplies. You know, we're Cabela's, whatever. So they want to supply. I guess the competition was so great um, that uh, because the trips out west from St. Joseph involved you know, forging through fewer rivers and streams. Um, evidently, this this city became the most used point po- uh, used point of departure area um, to make this journey, and I didn't know that. So, you know, Missouri actually does play a big role for the expansion out west and in um, the gold rush. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the lucrative business in the area. Uh, got that way just from what I said, outfitting the pioneers with all the stuff they needed. A Cabela's. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I think. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's interesting. I guess it's an estimated of 400,000 people went on this migration out west on these trails between the years 1840 and 1860. Wow. That's a lot of people. And, and, and actually, Missouri did play a big part of that, and I, I had no idea. Obviously, yeah. And I, that, that prompted me, to, and this actually is not the fun facts, believe it or not, but they are fun kind of facts. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting tidbits about Missouri and, that, and all of that. Did you know that the ill-fated Donner Party left from Independence, Missouri in 1846 when they were going to California? Mm-mm. I didn't know they left from there. Nope. Oops. Yes. And it, for those of you, it, you guys have to know what, what the Donner Party is, right? Yes. Yeah. If you don't, but let me give you a, a, a brief background. Okay. They took a wrong turn on their, on their uh, journey out west. The winters came early, and they pretty much starved to death. And those that didn't starve to death were cannibals. Mm-hmm. Tastes like chicken. Yep. <laughs> That'd be pretty bad. Hey, Bob's looking a little wobbly. We probably got about eight hours to go here. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of fat on him. Let's see. I know. I know. Like, uh, how did they decide? I don't even want to know. <laughs> but wrong. um, so that that was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, of the more 
250,000 immigrants that went to California during this period of the gold rush, only 5,000 were African American. So that was an interesting tidbit yeah. about that expansion. <clears throat> uh, noted mountain man Jim Bridger. Right. Evidently, he lived and died in present-day South Kansas City and is buried in Independence, Missouri. I'll be darned. Yeah. And then Captain John Sutter, everybody knows him? Mm-hmm. He actually lived at West Point, Westport, Missouri, before he, you know, to run away from all the creditors, he went to California. <laughs> and this is where his mill, the Sutter's Mill, Mm-hmm became um, what started the the gold rush in California. And he still died penniless. Oh, yeah. So I, I I think that just that guy just made some poor financial yeah. decisions yeah. choices. Apparently. <laughs> 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 All right. So I just thought that was kind of cool to, to throw in. But I really do have real fun facts. Okay. Do you want to hear? Well, yeah, go ahead. All right. Well, since... I am in Arizona, um, and as you guys know, Apache Junction, Gold Canyon area, I'm honing my sights in on that area. I thought that I would, you know, get in the true spirit of relating our fun facts to what I am doing, mm -hmm. and since I am local, uh, and also, I am reading a book called Crooked Mountain, and this is the one that's written by Ron Feldman. Oh, okay. It's about the lost Dutchman mine. So, in the spirit of all that, I thought I would, you know, do some fun facts. Sure. Um, I have six interesting facts. The first one I'm going to start with, did you know that the the Dutchman that everybody refers to, he really wasn't Dutch? <laughs> I didn't know the that. lies. <laughs> Listen to this. Um, he did immigrate. He, he is an immigrant. He did immigrate from Holland to come to Arizona. However, he was actually German. Ah. Yep. I thought he was Dutch. And, huh, it, he was from Germany. So, um, but back then, listen to this. this was, I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, many Americans at the time would, would, would refer to German um, descendant as Deutsch. I yeah. think I said it right. Deutsch. Yes. Deutsch. Deutsch yeah. Well, right anyway, Deutsch. yeah. And then when you're when you're speaking it, it kind of sounds like Dutch. So that's how um, <laughs> Joseph Waltz or Jacob Waltz. I'm sorry. <laughs> he earned his nickname. The Dutch. Man. Yep. The Dutch man. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> so when he actually came to Arizona. He had heard that, hey, they're they're discovering some gold. Um, when he came to Arizona, he actually worked for a mine that was located. It's called the Vulture, and it's located in Wickenburg. Yep. Mm -hmm. So uh, upon arriving, he was working for that mine. And this leads us to fun fact number two. Um, he's working for this mine, right? And he's just like, you know what? I'm going to want to venture on my own because... I know what they're doing, and I'm going to leave, which right. is great. So uh, instead of, you know, being part of a big mining company, um, he went off on his own. He started opening mining claims of his own around Prescott. But none of them evidently, and this is what's been known, really yielded much of value. So... Um, this must have changed sometime in the 1870s. No one's quite sure of the exact year, but sometime within the decade, Waltz turned up in Phoenix with a, just a whole bunch of gold. Mm. So stories describe him as having being like, you know, overly friendly, but boisterous, whatever. He would buy drinks for everybody at the bar. He was everybody's, be <laughs> everybody's <laughs> best bestie. friend. Yeah. <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, even though he was, you know, boasting and drunk, he never did give up hmm. the exact location of the discovery. Oh, so in God. the following years, he had more than enough gold to support himself. And when he needed more, he would just simply return to the mountains and collect some. Hmm. That's 
number two. Number three, Jacob Waltz eventually did enlist some help because, um, you know, he guarded the secret of the of the mine. Right. He um, it would even take weird precautions like dragging blankets behind all of his mules mm -hmm. to cover all their hoof prints so nobody could follow him or track him. Um, but, you know, at the time, the Apache Native American attacks were common in the Superstition Mountains. Mm -hmm. So the Apaches considered the super superstitions as theirs, and they they had little tolerance for people who trespassed. So, so to ensure that he would not fall victims to these attacks, he enlisted help from fellow immigrant Jacob Weiser. And as a team, they would work together. Like, one would be in the mine collecting the gold, and the other would be keeping watch. Smart move. That leads us to number four. Um, evidently, his partner did not last long, <laughs> as the story goes. The pair just became too comfortable. Uh, Jacob left Weiser uh, in the superstitions alone when he had to make a trek into town to get supplies. When he returned, only a trace of Weiser remained, which was just a torn up bloody shirt. Wow. Um, all the animals in their camp, was they, they were gone. The camp was destroyed. And Walt claimed that um, all of this clearly pointed to an Apache attack. But many people suspected that Jacob himself decided to take his partner out um, because it was kind of considered suspicious, his death. Mm -hmm. um, and by this time, a number of men were you know, openly searching for Walt's mine. And after two men who had been looking near uh, the discovery area, they ended up being discovered dead. Other deaths would soon join the list, but somehow Jacob always remained safe. Mm-hmm. Which only created more suspicion. Sure. And, yeah. yeah. Apache wouldn't have took a body. They would have left it. <laughs> right. Yeah. M makes no sense. That's, that's a dumb white man right there. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And the book that I'm reading, Crooked Mountain uh, from Ron Feldman, it, it, it's very interesting because it, it really touches upon all these things that I'm talking about. So I, I, I thought it was kind of cool to see the correlation, but uh, they, he spoke of all the different, the history of the area. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's intriguing learning about it. Um, and and it, it's really quite, quite incredible. So I would definitely recommend the read. I'm still reading it. So I don't want to, you know, right. get away. Well, I don't know. So right. <laughs> I'm still okay. reading it. <clears throat> so anyway, so we we're down to two more facts about the, the judgment of mine. Okay. Number five. Some people believe that there wasn't a mine at all. All right. And a theory is that in light of the growing suspicious deaths that were happening, um, they're, they're saying that Jacob was actually just a bandit and that he wasn't a prospector and that he knew the, uh, the mountains very well um, and that it wouldn't have been hard for him to catch other unsuspecting prospectors off guard mm -hmm. and, you know, overtake them and, and take their, their finds. Right. One specific event points, and this is, this family is mentioned in Crooked Mountain, the Peralta family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they discovered, they actually had discovered the gold was, was there. And the, what they were doing was systematically transporting it out of the mountains. Well, one such shipment of gold was, allegedly met by Apache warriors and they were murdered wow. and uh, they took everything but left the gold because really to the Apaches, it really wasn't any value to them. Um, and then uh, just the area, I guess they just thought it was sacred. So that leads us to number six, our last one, a uh, Jacob Waltz. He never divulged the location of his fortune and get evidently until his deathbed. It was in 1891. He was on his deathbed. He chose to reveal his secret to his caregiver named Julia Thomas. And a man who was said to be his adopted son, his name was Reinhardt Petrash. Unfortunately, by this time, 
Jacob was fading. Uh, so he gave a really poor description of the location of the mine. Uh, Thomas and Reinhardt, along with his brother, they searched for the gold, but they could not find it. Thomas had little money, so they had to abandon the search. Um, and then evidently, um, it was said that this search for this gold drove Reinhardt to suicide. Wow. Huh. So his brother died only a few years later. And even today, as you know, people are still searching for the lost still Dutchman. Still searching. Wow. Yes. <clears throat> Very cool. And while, um, you know, just a, a couple of things I just wanted to say, mm -hmm. you know, what do you guys think out there? Do you think that this so-called Dutchman was just an orchestrator of a cruel practical joke? <laughs> or will some lucky soul someday discover this mine? I don't know. I think it... Uh... I, I still think he found a Spanish cache. Yes, and, and and the book that I'm reading, Crooked Mountain, kind of alludes to that because they they talk about the Peraltas and and the the expedition that they went on, mm -hmm. and what had happened on it, and the ore was so rich that they would actually they they opened up their own little smelting area there and were they were hiding it, mm. thinking that they would come back and and they were they went under some attack. And uh, from the Apaches, and you know. See, I, I still think there's there's a lot of it out there that we don't know about. Like you said, they sure. you know they had it, it smelted it or whatever, right, and, and didn't, yeah. didn't have a chance to say anything to anybody. But I still believe there's probably a lot of a lot of gold still there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. somewhere. somewhere out there. Yeah, it's let's it. get going. Let's start, start <laughs> That's here, it. Martin. I'm packing up and moving to Apache Junction. <laughs> Start searching. <laughs> oh, I was going to go in the morning while you're at work if I find it. Well, good luck. That's not fair. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go, go Shed. It. Do it. Go get get a metal detector. I'm going to tell everybody at work. I'm sorry. I got to go. <laughs> I'm I got to go. Yeah. I'm feeling ill today. Great. Nice. My flight's been bumped up to 10 this morning. Yeah. I got to go. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Oh, great news, Kathleen. That was awesome. Again, as I always. Love I love it. I know we all do. Yeah, it was good. That was a good segment. All the listeners do as well. You know, they all look forward to Kathleen's dredging up the news. Well, we're going to do something yeah. different tonight. We're going to take a real quick break, and we'll be right back. Hey. Do you like to mine for gold, enjoy prospecting a nice crack in the bedrock, enjoy getting outdoors to camp, fish, hunt, and hike on your public lands? You plan your trip, load the gear, grab the dog, put the family in the truck, and drive off to a locked gate. A sign says you cannot enter or access your own public lands. Mining claims and public land owned by we the people are being designated as off limits by our own government every single day. Are you concerned about the direction our government is going? Are you tired of seeing no access, no entry signs on your lands? We are, and we are fighting back. We are AMRA, America Mining Rights Association, the fastest growing small mining advocacy association in America. AMRA is a 501c3 not-for-profit formed by miners, hunters, off-roaders, retired military men, and women to stop the insanity. AMRA was formed to educate, unite, and help the small miners and public land users on their rights. Rights given to us by God. Do you want access to great mining claims? For a small tax-deductible donation to their Miners Legal Fund, your family gains access to proven excellent mining claims across America for an entire year. AMRA challenges the USFS, BLM, EPA, and the other agencies intent upon stopping you from enjoying your own lands. You are who pays these people's wages. It is time they listen to us. We need to unite. And that is what AMRA is doing. As you sit here right now, thousands of acres of public lands are being closed, locked, and blocked from use by you. Are you fed up yet? Join us. Get in on this fight and let's restore America to what our families fought and died for. Freedom. Just visit AmericanMiningRights.com. AmericanMiningRights.com. Also, check us out on Facebook at American Mining Rights Association. AmericanMiningRights.com. All right, everybody, we're back. Now, Scott, didn't you say you had a few, like, announcements to make or something? Yeah, yeah, okay. I got a couple. All right, hold Let's on. see. Hold on one second. 
now it is time for In the Goldfield with Scott Swiftwater Tony. Join Since you Scott haven't each been here, because he shares useful <laughs> right. information to help you find and recover I more heard that gold. In a while. Right. Swift it's been a long time, hasn't it? Yeah. Go ahead, Scott. All right, you funny guys. <laughs> anyway, as we all know that uh, Arizona and the uh, East Coast is two different uh, tangos, you guys have got still a little bit of cold. Well, we got the sunrise is doing its job and we're already hitting the low 90s and uh, some of the mid 90s here and uh, just want to put a warnings out like two weeks ago this is you know the two weeks that i actually missed i was actually got warnings i was going to put out then but the scorpions are out really hot and heavy mm. and i mean these are not they're not it's not the kind I like saw that. yeah if you're digging that's cool but even turning over rocks is a big no, no. <laughs> because, is it because of the heat? Yeah, when the, the heat. Yeah, the heat and the dryness is number one because they come out because they got to hunt, so they're looking for the bugs. Mm -hmm. So they're usually out really thick at night, but in the daytime they like the dark, so they always hide under rocks, uh, uh, logs, stuff like that. So if the like the geocaching people and the, the rock hunters that go out there, and even us gold diggers, you know, we we know most generally the, to look for them, but the, there's just there's just a high high risk of them right now because they're out really thick. Uh, I've already seen a couple of uh, videos actually from here from Phoenix uh, that I get on a local Phoenix feed and a lady had 27 scorpions in a bag just from her front porch. Wow. So wow. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's just her living in the wrong area, but they, <laughs> they are seriously out. And uh, another, the rattlesnakes is another thing. They are just house. Yeah. They're coming out really good. Well, just because the sun is, 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 is so hot and they need that heat to hunt. Mm -hmm. So the rattlesnakes are out really furiously too. Now up north around Prescott and everything, you know, this, the scrub brush, you still got to keep an eye out. Uh, they're not getting as hot as what we are, but their temperatures are still on the rise and you know, it's, it's time for them to come out. So be aware of what you're doing, especially turning over any kind of rock, even, even a little uh, a three inch rock could have a little bitty scorpion under it. Wow. So, and man, if they sting you in the finger, you're gonna you're gonna know you got hit by something. I, I can guarantee it, because uh, if you ever looked up 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 close, the stingers are what they you know what the pictures show them to be. They are there, and they real uh, they'll, they'll get you. <laughs> nasty looking stingers. You ain't a joking. And they got like I said, they got it. They got enough poison. It's not gonna kill you, but man, it's gonna make you feel like you wish you were dead. Probably. Jeez. And a lot of people told me that you just get real sick. Mm. Mercy, stay away from them scorpions. Be careful. Oh, man. Listen to Scott. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even be fun to play with out here, I don't believe. No. <laughs> uh -uh. No, that's crazy, though. Whew. I guess got to no. take the good with the bad, then, you know. <laughs> right? And it's right. And for everybody that's out there right now digging, uh, be conscious of what's around you and the weather that could be coming. We were supposed to get a little bit of something late tonight, early tomorrow, but if we get any rain, you know, they say there's not no rain in the forecast, but hey, things just happen. If we get rain, there will be flash floods. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts. We've had so little water, and when it rains, it's just going to carry right off of everything, mm -hmm. hit the washes, and, and start going like a bulldozer. Wow. So don't get caught in the washes. Crazy. <clears throat> Good advice, there's no Scott. chance of rain. Are you making that up? No, no. There's there's supposed to be some stuff coming in from California. We're supposed to have some high winds later on tonight. Is is what hmm. the the issue was telling me this morning, and uh, there's no wind blowing where I'm at, oh. not right now. So I mean, it's pretty so calm. We, we will see if the biffles really did bring the rain. That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> if it rained. You guys brought it. <laughs> you saved I mean, them. If it, I mean, if it comes across from California like they said it is, and it actually goes down instead of up, up it'll probably we could have a chance to get some rain just because it's been so hot. Mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm not holding my breath, but you never know. I've seen I've seen weird rainstorms pop out of you know of a Black Canyon City just come out of nowhere. So, wow, cool. very cool. Well, good advice, Scott. Thank you, brother. No problems. Like I said, I'll try to have my stuff together for next week that I've been All writing right. down just trying to put together, but it's not easy. It's just not easy. We know. <laughs> we all know. You know, but we're glad you made it tonight anyway. Yeah, I was glad to be here. That was a good move. Take your stuff to work on Wednesday and just yeah. kick back there for a minute and 
do the show from there. Yeah, but yeah, I still got to pack everything up and take yeah. it back. But yeah. uh, so you're not done working? Uh, no. <laughs> well, you got to. Did you bring a a laptop or a, or desk? Yeah, yeah. I, oh, okay. I, yeah, I got my laptop. Okay, so you just grab it and your microphone, shove it in a bag, and you're out of there. That's it. Good, 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 good. Well, we want to thank everybody for being here tonight, and uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, unless you guys got something else real quick. No. Good. No. We're going uh-uh. to get dinner. Yep. All right, good. Well, we're going to go ahead and call tonight here then, and uh, we want to thank everybody for tuning in, as always, and be sure to join us Sunday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time for another great show. Until then, we're out of here, everybody. Good night. Good night, Good night, everybody. Good night. Be sure to tune in next Sunday at 730 for another great show. For updates and more info, please go to www.prospectorsradio.com.